I'm doing this because I, I want to live a long, healthy life that I can do the things that I want to do. You're here for 45 minutes and you don't leave without being in a good sweat. You've really had it work out. That's it, there we go. Keep working, keep working. Squeezing those chest muscles, that's it. Almost there. Keep working a few more, a few more. I will soon be 65. I am going to be 65. I'm 69 years old. I am 72 years old. I'm 84 years old. One thing I love working with those in their 60s, 70s, and 80s, I've never met a group of people who respond so quickly and so well to exercise. It's unbelievable. Their bodies are craving it. And as we age, we need to exercise more, not less. That's what society tells us. We need to not be as active, but actually physiologically, we need to do more in order to stay as fit and healthy as possible. And that's what gets me excited here. We all feel like we're working together towards a goal and are there for each other. The women here are phenomenal. We're all trying to be as fit as we can be. Toss me the ball now. I'll toss it right back to you. The trainers, every one of them, are uh, very knowledgeable. They modify the program so that if you have a knee issue, a hip issue, a shoulder issue, they modify it so that everyone in the group can be safe. It makes you want to come back because you're with friends and it encourages you to keep improving. That's the wonderful thing about this is it's a community as well as exercise. So you have that support and discussion that helps you find ways to do the things you know you have to do better. We all have the same uh, fitness goals. You got it. We encourage each other and the instructors actually they're fun. To be able to master something gives you a feeling of accomplishment. Go, 10 seconds, fast as you can. Pushing and pulling, there we go, driving those arms. Then to know that I'm building strength, stability, balance, these are all things as we age that I think are very important to us. It's scary to start, but it's worth it. That's it, Mary. Nice work, nice work. It's worth conquering that fear and saying, I know it's hard, but I can do it. And then when you can do it, it's a wonderful feeling. I like the changes that I see. I feel much stronger. I just have a lot of energy for the whole day. A lot of people don't think I'm 84 because I'm, <laughs> I'm so energized. I feel like I'm much stronger. I feel... Um, a real sense of self-confidence and self-worth, actually. All right, ready and go! Abs tight, there we go. Push it over fast, push it over, and high five! five. Nice work! All right, well, thanks for having me here today. I'm very excited and honored to be part of this great gathering. And uh, before we start today, I'd like uh, Tessa to quick come up. Tessa is my manager, so if you guys have questions today, um, just kind of about how we run our place that I can't answer or um, whatever, you can absolutely ask her. So what we're going to do is I'm going to quick film a little video and uh, she'll pan around, you guys do a little cheer, um, and I'll share kind of why I'm doing this and kind of a lesson for you guys. So, all right, here we go. Hey, this is Dustin Maher. I'm at, um, in Phoenix, Arizona at the Functional Aging Institute. I just want to say hi to all my clients, friends, and whoever else is watching this, and just thank you guys for all your support, especially our Fit Over 50 program, because I wouldn't be uh, speaking here today if it wasn't for you guys. And so I just wanted to introduce all my friends to you guys here today. They're from all over the world. And they're all here passionate about learning how to create a Fit Over 50 program and just help as many people in their communities. And so I've been learning a lot over the last uh, day or two here. And I want to have one takeaway, one challenge for you guys. Yesterday, uh, we heard from a guy. He was 102 years old when he passed away. And he said um, his wife died at 93 years old. And um, from 93 to 101, he wrote three books. And he said his 90s were the most productive years of his life. So whether you're in your 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, or beyond, I just want to challenge you that the best years are yet to come. Live in the present moment, be, but be excited for the future. Figure out what your hobbies are that you love, what you want to still add to society, because you got a lot to give. So that's my challenge for you today. i got to give a presentation, so I'll see you guys when I get back. Take care.
Okay, so this is a side note. I would recommend all you guys doing that sort of thing wherever you go uh, around the country when you travel. Make, make the most of it. You want to create a little celebrity status. You don't have to be on stage to do that. Interview someone. Go to the pool. Have someone share three exercises that they can do at home to improve their balance. Whatever that is. Um, those sorts of things add up long term. Share that on your email list, put it on Facebook, put it on YouTube, those sorts of things. So that's not even part of my presentation, but I just wanted to share that with you guys. All right, so we've heard a lot of great stuff. Mark kicked it off yesterday with really talking about kind of getting us excited. We all are here because you know there's a huge opportunity and we need to, to help a lot of people. And so I wanted to share today kind of the nuts and bolts. Hopefully there's a little bit of inspiration in this, but it's not focused on that. This is kind of the how-to, um, and I'm going to share a little bit about my story, but mostly it's, it's how I did what I did, and uh, hopefully you guys can replicate it if you uh, want to. So um, let's get started here. So this is what we're going to cover today. Quickly share about my story, kind of help you give a little bit of background, um, and then things to consider before starting. Again, I'm calling it a Fit Over 50 program. I'll kind of share what the business model looks like with that. Uh, then we're going to talk about marketing. How the heck do you get people to actually sign up for this thing? And then just some random thoughts at the end. And I'm not sure if we'll have time for questions. Um, if we don't, I'll be happy to answer them afterwards. So my story, um, I started training 12 years ago. I know you're probably thinking I started when I was 15, but no, I started when I was about 21. And uh, I started with moms. So Fit Moms for Life, like uh, Lindsay said, was what I started with. Uh, my mom was a stay-at-home mom. I wanted to really serve that population, and so I started a class called Mama Tone Fitness when I was just out of college. Free childcare. That did well. Working moms wanted something, so I started uh, boot camps. That was kind of right, at least in the Midwest, when boot camps, no one really had heard of them, but they're kind of cool on the West Coast, and so I was like, all right, I'm going to do boot camps. Did them in parks and kind of hit the, the boot camp wave, did well with that, had 11 locations uh, in the Madison area. And then um, started to work on DVDs, wrote books, um, created a lot of online programs because people wanted something outside of just Madison. So I've done quite a bit of that. Um, and then I'm just going to fast forward then basically to pretty much this time last year. So I was at this conference. I've been friends with Cody um, and Dan for I think eight years now, seven or eight years. And uh, I had just kind of started dabbling with our Fit Over 50 program uh, about two months prior to this. So about 14 months ago is sort of when I started. And certainly over the course of 10 years, I've trained, you know, we've trained many people in their 50s and 60s, but hadn't really put a focus on it. And so I just started dabbling with it, came here, learned some good stuff, and then I would say in August is when I was like really committed to starting to, to uh, really crank this up. And then, um, so since then, what's happened? So we've had over 350 people join the, uh, the program, 50 to 84. Lee there, um, you saw in the video, she was, uh, we've got like three 84-year-olds, but she's kind of our oldest right now. And it's just really rewarding to kind of work with these people. And um, we usually have about 170 people active at any given time. Um, and it's brought in, uh, it says the past year, it's probably more like last 14 months or so, it's brought in an extra almost half a million dollars to our business, so it's been good. Okay, so here's some of the things to start considering. I know about half of you guys look like you owned your own business, half of you maybe work in a facility. You could do this either place, okay? So you want to think about what kind of location, what kind of space um, do you need? What times do you have these programs? What types of equipment do you need? What types of trainers, if you're going to be hiring other trainers or if you're going to be doing it, what do you want to look for? So that's what we're going to start with here. So location and space. Uh, I think somewhere that's easy to find is important uh, because as people age, they're, they're not as good with Google Maps, but most of them are pretty, still pretty good with it. So having a place that's easy to find is, is important. Um, I think just having it open, bright, and friendly, uh, trying to get away. You know, someone said, I think Dan, Dan or Cody said yesterday, being like the anti-gym, we really try to not, we don't call ourselves a gym, so we call ourselves a transformation center. So that's what, that's what kind of our name is in Madison. And then part of it, one of our programs is Fit Over 50. And then we also have Fit Over 65. There's really not that much difference, but it depends who I'm talking to. If someone's 65 years old or above, I call it Fit Over 65, or I'll call it Fit Over 50 if they're in their 50s, or early 60s. Um, bright, friendly, of course, clean is an important thing for you know, any client, but I think as um, people age, they expect to have things a little bit nicer, so just really focusing on that. Side note with cleaning, what we do is we do trade-outs, so I don't pay for cleaners. Um, I usually have about five 
cleaners almost every day. We have someone cleaning our facility. Um, those are people who can't afford our programs, but are really highly motivated to want to be part of them. And so we're just always keeping our eyes and ears open for people who are like, you know what, I'd pretty much give anything to do this. I really want to do it. What, you know, what can we do? And so we'll have them do a trade out for cleaning. So that's a great way to, to do that. Um, and of course, having it safe. We want to try to keep uh, as few things you know, around for them to trip on as possible. It's just kind of being aware of that. And I put 1,200 square foot minimum. And again, I'm going to share my business model here in a moment. Um, you could certainly go smaller with this, but this is about, I think, the minimum for kind of my business model that I recommend doing. And um, our facility here, we have 6,200 square feet. It's kind of our main location. We've got a couple other locations uh, we do some other stuff with. But uh, this open space here, I mean, you can't really see behind where the camera is, but uh, it's about 3,200. Um, we'll have two groups of 10. So I do small group training with groups of 10. So we have two groups of 10 in this, in this uh, I guess, room. And then we have another room on the other side that's smaller. It's about 1,200 square feet. We'll have another group of 10. So we can have up to 30 people go on at the same time, which is, is great. Okay, so here's the times. People always ask, when do you, when do you start this thing? So if you have a 65 plus population, um, of course, a lot of them are retired or semi-retired, so you'll be able to go over that 10.30 to maybe 4 p.m. time slot. Um, but I'm finding a lot of people, um, most of our clients that we attract, they, they don't have to work, but they want to work. So they're still working into their early 70s, a lot of them. So they may not be able to do uh, a time that's at 10.30 or 11.30. Um, of course, you've got the 50 to, to 60-year-olds. Most of them are still working, a lot of them. So you're going to have to go with the earlier times. So here's, here's what my current schedule is. We have 53 sessions each week available right now. And we'll just continue to add as things get filled up. Um, but 6.45 AM, it's a very popular time, working women. By the way, so we're, we're co-ed, but I only market to women. So about 97% of my clients are women. What I have found is 65 plus year olds really could care less if men were there. And a lot of them are widowed or divorced, and they want men there. So that could be a whole new thing. I just have yet to start focusing on, on marketing to men, but I, I definitely want our programs to be co-ed. I think it's, there's nothing wrong with that. And even women, a lot of women in their 50s, I think they don't care too much. Um, but especially 65 plus, they could care less, is what I've, what I've experienced at least. Uh, 7.30 a.m., still pretty good. A lot of people can still do that. Our sessions are 45 minutes. I'll talk more about that in a minute. But um, we have showers, facilities if they need to. So those are kind of the working time slots. Uh, then we've got 10.30 a.m. Those are either kind of our younger 50 to 60 year olds who either don't work or maybe stay at home or whatever, part-time jobs, or kind of our retired folks that do that. 10.30 is the most popular kind of mid-morning times. 11.30, 1 p.m., 3.30 I find is a tough time slot, just kind of in that middle awkward time. Teachers, it works well for teachers a lot of times. Um, 4.15, some people are now getting off of work. 5 p.m., very popular time slot. 6 p.m., very popular. And we just opened up like a 7 p.m., and that's uh, still not filled yet. But I think there is still a lot of potential for those later, later time slots um, also. So those are, those are the times that we currently have. And if you're just starting off, you know, you you're going for 65 plus, I think the 1030 is a really good place to start. Even a 930 maybe, but I have other programs going on for our stay-at-home moms at 830, 930, so I can't, can't do it then. Okay, so this is a big slide. Um, don't get overwhelmed by all this stuff. This is kind of what I'll, I have now. I mean, our business is growing, and I basically have, have uh, told my trainers, you know, within reason, I'll buy them anything they want to. Um, we really focus on having workouts that are always different and always changing up. So here's just a few things that we have. Dumbbells, kettlebells, TRX, resistance bands, ankle bands, slam balls, med balls, rowing machines, airdyne bikes, battle ropes, BOSU, stability balls, um, aerobic steps, sliders, mats, um, I like to have those, they're ridiculously expensive, but you know like the gymnastics mats that you can be up like, you know, they're full, they're this high. If you've got people um, who can't go to the ground all the time, using mats can be a really good uh, way for them to still participate fully. Foam rollers, lacrosse balls, barbells, pull-up bars, um, really like pull-up bars for just kind of stretching out. Scarves, scarves are awesome. If you guys have never played around with those, great for hand-eye coordination, especially with our older population. Uh, sand bells, small handheld sand balls, uh, surges, those are those water things. Uh, Kamigans, they're like these blue things with water inside of them. Colored uh, floor dots, so it's kind of more for agility. Um, we like to do things where, you know, they kind of walk or fast, you know, 
slow, slow jog or fast walk, and then you call a color out, and they got to kind of side shuffle, touch it, those sorts of reaction type things, and then agility ladders. So that's some of our equipment that we use. Uh, two things I wanted to mention there, the rowing machines and Airdyne bikes. I'm a massive fan of both of those for interval training, burst training, because it's low impact, really no impact actually. Pretty much anybody with bad knees or joints can do it, and it allows them to get their heart rates up very high, very quickly, and very safely. So love, love, love those two um, things. And battle ropes too are you know, pretty good for most people to get the heart rate up. Okay, so it's trainers. So I had um, Dan come, this was a... Uh, six months ago, I think, five or six months ago, and train, um, I guess, I think all of my staff was, uh, was able to come, or all my trainers, I should say, and uh, we had a great time, great day training, but, um, you know, of course, besides being FAI certified, it would be great, um, you know, having them certified through other organizations, if they can have a degree in kinesiology, that's a bonus, but I don't think it's definitely not necessary for sure, um, but I think they've got to be passionate about working with this population. Dan had said yesterday he'd met some business owners that really could care less. They don't really want to work with baby boomers, but um, whatever, you can make some money. It's not a good attitude for trainers to have. So you got to find people, and we have a few trainers that started working with that population, and they did not like it, and they stopped doing it. So not everyone is cut out for it. Um, so you got to make sure it's the right personalities and that they're passionate about it. Um, their ability to build rapport, be able to connect. You know, a lot of trainers are in their 20s and 30s. You know, we've got quite a few. I think three of our trainers are in their 40s. Um, I don't think we have anybody in their 50s plus within our group. But, uh, you know, it's not easy sometimes for a 20 or 25-year-old to build rapport and to connect, but it certainly is possible. And I think some of our most popular trainers, um, I mean, all of our trainers, our clients just love, but uh, some of our head trainers are in their early 20s and, and do amazing with them. So it's, uh, I think, Age is not really, um, doesn't really matter. Fun and positive. Like we said, like one of the women said in the video, she's like, it's fun to come here. It's got to be fun. We can't take ourselves too seriously. And we've got to look to have a good time all the time. Okay, so what's the business model? So I've tried a couple different things, and this is what I, I found that had us stuck the best. Um, I'm not bashing one-on-one -on -one training at all. If we have someone come in who just can't do a group setting, they're just so... Um, dysfunctional, I guess, or whatever you want to say, uh, we just don't take them in, you know, and so we've turned down quite a few people. I used to have groups of four and then groups of ten. My thinking was, okay, there's going to be some people who just, a group of ten is not an appropriate setting for them, groups of four. What I have found now, though, is about 90% of the people coming to us, groups of ten is completely appropriate for them, and we can make it work. So I found that having, let's just say, one group of ten compared to three groups of four, it's easier from a, uh, a standpoint of training, it's easier from a standpoint of less trainers needed, less space needed. So logistically, um, we've just found that the groups of 10, and if you have a group of 10, basically you can put 12 people in the time slot because not everyone's gonna show up each time. Okay, so you can sell about 12 spots. I like 45 minute sessions, I think it's not too long, not too short, um, it's kind of right in the middle. I, I think it works the best uh, for what we do. And then most of our clients meet three times a week. Uh, some meet two if they're not willing to go for three times. But we would try to get everyone at three times. I'd say it's about 80% of our clients are do that. And then trying to add as much additional value as possible. So what do we do for that? I'll talk about that in a second. Here's the membership. Um, 24 weeks is kind of what we, so we, you know, you might have someone come in, I just want to learn how to do some exercises, write me out a program, and I want to do it on my own, I want to do it at another gym. They're not a good fit for us. So I'm like, okay, that's great. You know, find a trainer at your gym, work with them for a few sessions, and then you can do it on your own. We're looking to build community. We're looking to have that relationship. We want you to get to know other people, and you can't do that um, meeting once per week. It's another thing. Sometimes people want to meet once per week. We don't do that either. No, it's got to be three times ideally, maybe two. So 24-week um, commitment up front. $60 a week is our price point, so $20 a session for our three times a week, $47 per week for two times a week, and we bill on a weekly basis. I find billing weekly uh, works really well for people who uh, money is a little tighter. It just helps them out a little bit more, um, and it's worked, it's worked really great. You'll find some people will just pre pre um, would like to prepay the whole thing up front, and we'd let them do that, but um, for the most part, we like the, the weekly billing. 
Okay, so what's included? So I, were, I wrote the word free here a lot, and that was on purpose because people like free things. We all like free things. And so if I can say, you know what? If you hired a trainer one-on-one, you're going to pay 40 to $75 for that session, right? We can give you, you know, we can give you as good a results as that, if not more, because you're going to have more fun. You're going to meet other people, and it's only going to be costing you $20 per session. But not only that, look who else what you get for free, okay? So that's kind of... It's, I hardly have to sell the program because it sells itself. But we um, have yoga a couple times a week. Gentle yoga. They can come to that for free. We have yin yoga. Um, we provide at least one to two free workshops each month. We've got someone like foam rolling and mobility and just tons of things. So we have, those are all free. Uh, free grocery store tours. I love giving grocery store tours. So every four to six weeks I take a big group to the grocery store. Um, we give them eating plans that our nutritionist creates. Uh, we can look at their food journal, analyze that for them. We give them online workouts that they can do if they're traveling. Uh, we, can, uh, we give them mobility exercise videos as well that they can do at home. Give them t-shirts, books. Um, once they attend for three months, they get a free massage from our masseuse. They get some other upgrades as they continue to come along. Um, and here's a big one too. I'm going to talk about this a little later, but free appointment makeups and time changes. So, you know, you say, okay, I'm going to do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 1030 in the morning. That's my time slot. But of course, we all know things come up. We've got doctor's appointments. A lot of them are taking care of either their spouse or their parents or something like that. Um, and so what we say is you can go to any other session for free. You can make it up, um, you know, if you have to. We try to, you know, try not to um, have to miss. But if you do miss, you can go to any other session. You might be like, well, then you're going to get like 30 people in, another, in one of the sessions you know, to make up. And it just hasn't worked out that way. We generally will have maybe one or two people making up in either, any session. So if everyone shows up, they might, there might be 12 people, but that's very, very uncommon. Still usually keeps with that 9 to, nine to 11 number there. And people love that um, aspect of things. Okay, so we're going on to marketing now. Kind of how do you market this? How do we get actually people to come in? I could spend, you know hours and hours talking about any one of these things. Uh, it's kind of what I'm most passionate about is, is marketing. I'm, I'm, more, I'm passionate about training too. I love training, but marketing is right up there too. Um, so create a funnel, create a client experience, um, email. We've talked about that a little bit yesterday, um, working with email, local partnerships and groups. Talked about that yesterday a little bit. Workshops, uh, media, public speaking, and then Facebook ads, and I'll camp out a little bit at the end on Facebook ads because that's really what's helped me a lot over the past year build this particular program. Okay, so here is my simple client getting funnel. We have a marketing message, whatever that is. Maybe that's me being on TV. Maybe that's a Facebook ad. Maybe that's me at a workshop, whatever. Okay, and then we try to get them to some sort of web page to collect their email address and or questionnaire. And I don't think I have a slide on the questionnaire. It's nothing, maybe I do, but it's nothing fancy. It's basically name, phone number, email, maybe their age. Um, what's the number one health, and, health or wellness goal you want to achieve over the next year? And um, what are you afraid of not being able to do 10 years from now? So it kind of gets them kind of thinking, shoot, I may, may not be able to play with my grandkids or get up from the ground or whatever. Uh, and then if we're able to reach all your health and fitness goals um, and put together an exercise and nutrition plan for you, uh, would $20 a session two to three times a week fit into your budget? Yes, no, maybe. You know, people will give you a lot of different answers. But that's a good way to kind of weed out um, and pre-qualify if people are able to financially pay for it. And then any other questions. So that's my questionnaire. And, uh, and then from that, so I've used different forms. SurveyMonkey, I've used the you know, free version of SurveyMonkey for a long time. And uh, it's worked great. And then, you know, there's Google Forms. There's tons of different ways you can get it into your email provider. Maybe it's Infusionsoft. But it doesn't really matter how you do it, but collecting that information. And so when I, basically a year ago from today, I was, when I was here, I was like, I want to learn about this demographic more than anybody else in the world. So I decided that I was going to make every single phone call. So I have made 1,050 phone calls to these people uh, over the last 12 months. So I got a hold of about 70% of them. So I've had over 700 conversations with people 50 to 84. Each one lasts between 10 and about 17 minutes. 
um, and you learn obviously a lot about everybody. So I've done a lot of market research, learned kind of what works, what doesn't work, what their pain points are, and you can use that then of course in your copy and your writing and your email follow-up, all that kind of stuff. Um, so in that phone call, I basically just build rapport. I ask them, hey, have you heard of our program in the past? Do you have any friends already getting results with us or is this the first time? Most of them it's their first time because they haven't heard of this program. A bunch of them have heard of me because I've done a bunch of stuff in the community, but as they get older, I've seen 50, you know, 65 plus, most have never heard of me as well. Um, but it's just such an attractive concept to them. Wow, we can work out with someone our own age. We can have a, a small group trainer for an affordable price that it's, it's just it's a very easy sell. So we just chat with them, kind of find out, hey, what's your goals? You know, yes, they fill out the form, they've given me a little information, but I might follow up on that. Do you have any um, limitations, things you're concerned about, joint issues, all that kind of stuff? Find out what times of the day they're available, if they can afford the price, uh, you know, confirm that, kind of tell them about the program. And if they're still excited, if they're still interested, which I found is about 75% of those people that I get a hold of, then I say, all right, come in for a, a free session. So what I used to do is do these workshops where I would have them all come to a workshop and then all these people are kind of prospects and you put them through a workout, you teach them all this stuff, and then they can join. Well, they haven't met anybody who's already been paying, right? And they've never met an unbiased uh, client. So what you do is you put them with, some, with the groups that you're already part of. So if you're trying to give them in a 1030 time slot, put them in a 1030, give them a free session. That is the best thing you can do. And that's worth money coming here all the time. I spent about six months trying to figure that one out. And once they attend, it's about a 90% close rate. They're already sold on it. I let them talk to the participants as long as they want to afterwards. So a lot of times they'll chat for another 15 minutes. I'm kind of like, all right, come on, I got to get going. But um, I let them chat with them. The participants sell that person on the program. We meet in the office, basically say, how, how to go? Did you like it? What'd you think? And again, 90%. You might have to answer a couple last minute questions, but that's about it. So super simple sales process. And again, I've chosen to do this entire year just because I wanted to learn the process so that I could teach it to other people and stuff. But uh, that's how it goes. That's, that's what's worked for me for uh, the last year and you know, generated close to half a million dollars. Oh, here it is. So yeah, this is basically the survey application. SurveyMonkey. I used to just use SurveyMonkey. Um, but now I finally have embedded it into my own website. So basically, that's a smarter option because then you can pixel them, and we'll talk about that in a second, but track them. So when you put Facebook ads out, which is where I was getting most of my traffic from, um, you can then retarget them. And again, we'll talk about that in a moment. We already talked about all this, so go to the next one. All right, so email marketing. So the people who just filled out that survey form, they'll get put on some sort of email list. Who, do, who does, who like emails your clients on a regular basis? I'm just curious. Okay, so only about half of you. Um, so email marketing, I would say, is probably still the number one thing you should do. It's, it's old school, but I've been doing it for tw uh, 10 years now, 10 or 11 years, and it's still the number one best way for me to grow my business. Write to your clients on a regular basis. I send out five to seven emails each week, and I've done that for the last 10 years. Whatever you write about you know, nutrition, exercise, mindset, community, all those kinds of things. I never have enough stuff I can't talk about. So I'm always writing, always doing videos, and just keeping constantly in front of either the prospects or clients. Both are very valuable. So for this particular program, say you don't have this program in place right now, you want to do it again, whether it's at your own facility or maybe you're working on another facility, you want to create a group of 10, maybe it's a group of four to start off with. Um, I would try to build some anticipation up within, you know, for four to six weeks leading up to it, uh, and then kick it off with probably a free week or a free session for them to come try it out for themselves. Um, and then try to add more ideal prospects into your email list every day. So again, if that's on Facebook ads you're doing or wherever you're speaking somewhere, collect everyone's email address, and then you can follow up with them, uh, just like Nicole talked about a little bit yesterday. Have an evergreen follow-up sequence. So again, a sequence of emails, videos, testimonials, stories that you can communicate to them on a daily basis for at least a few weeks to kind of share what your program's about, who you are, what the benefits uh, they can experience are. And then, uh, of course, use client testimonials and text. So that video I showed at the beginning, I've got about 15 of those videos made um, that are just always good. 
But the interesting thing is those videos were only made three months ago. So I sold about 280 of those clients with no testimonials at all. I didn't really have even a web page for it. It was just a phone call, chat with them, get them in. Okay, so you don't have to have a lot of fancy things. I mean, I think more testimonials the better, but I just was kind of lazy. I mean, I could have pulled up some testimonials from other things, but it was working really well that way. So you don't have to have everything perfect and in place to get started. That's my point of that. Yep. So basically with any email provider, Constant Contact, Aweber, Infusionsoft, there's probably 10 different ones out there, you can just set up an email sequence. So someone gets something free from you, like a, you know, download a free ebook or come for a free trial session or something like that, and then they get onto your email list. And so it just automatically you know, set it up for every day or whatever you want. Every other day, a certain message comes out to them. So that's what an evergreen, evergreen meaning that if someone signs up today or they sign up in three months, they still get the first of that email and then you just put them through a sequence. So most of my email sequences I've got out for like 180 days. So for 180 days, they've got a certain, it's probably 50 emails within that. And then I also send live emails out as well. So, and again, share helpful content they can use. It's not just pitching them, okay? Very little pitching. It's more just sharing information that they can take and do with what they want with. Okay, well, local partnerships and groups. Again, Cody talked a little bit about this one. Um, I've done some of this. Again, uh, I'm saving Facebook ads for the end, but that's where about 80% of my clients came in for this program. Um, but retirement communities, this has been a good one for me. So Attic Angels is a place uh, in town, and I think they have like three or 400 residents. Uh, the residents mostly aged from like 70 to 85. It's kind of assisted living. But they have angels who are generally 50 to 70 who are pretty healthy and fit who take care of them. It's a volunteer thing. And those people generally have quite a bit of money. They're passionate about being healthy and fit. And so I've partnered with them a few times. I run free workshops, and we'll talk about workshops in a moment. They come in, do the workshop, and then they join our program from there. So we've gotten like, I think, 12 or so people just from that one um, Two workshops I've done with that. Uh, Chamber of Commerce, chiropractors, plastic surgeons, health coaches, doctors, PTs, massage therapists, financial planners. I've, used, I've worked with all these throughout the, my last 10 years, but really in the last year I have not done much for this particular program, but I think all those are really viable places to network if you, if you want to. They're all really good. Okay, so what does a workshop look like? This is what I've kind of done at least. Um, 30 minutes of exercise, 30 minutes of discussion. The 30 minutes of exercise I call an exercise buffet. So it's just a little sampling of a lot of different things. We're utilizing a lot of our equipment, showing them things they've never done, things they can't do at home, okay? They're not gonna buy battle ropes probably and do them at home. So things like that and just showing them, giving them success but also showing how they struggle, right? So like having them do a single leg coming down, touching, standing up, doing this sort of thing. Most of them are gonna tip over, get close to tipping over, right? So they're like, oh man, I knew my balance wasn't great, but it's really bad. So showing them some of the things that they, we can work on, uh, I think is really important during that and making it really fun too. So that's, uh, that's the 30 minute exercise portion. 30 minutes of discussion. Pretty much all my talks I give, um, Wherever I speak, it's on four main key points. I call it the four key pillars. It's what my book is based off of. So it's mindset, exercise, nutrition, community, and support. So I talk about all those four things and how that looks as we age and how do we age as awesome as possible. So that's about 30 minutes. And at the end, I say, hey, you know what? If you enjoyed today, if you're interested in learning more about what our Fit Over 50 uh, program looks like and you want to come for a free session uh, with our clients, you can meet some of them. Uh, I've got a calendar here. Put your name, email, sign you up. And that's kind of how we do the workshops. So you could do that with Facebook ads, get people into the workshops. You can partner with other people to do that. Or if you have an email list, it's a great way for your current clients to invite people into it. So if you're working with a lot of people who are in their 20s, 30s, and 40s, they have parents potentially that live in your community. That's kind of one of the reasons why I started this program was that um, I was getting asked by my moms, hey, my parents, they're, they're not able to walk with my grandbaby up the stairs anymore. I'm a little nervous. Is there anything for them? You know? So that was one of the reasons why I started the program. Uh, and then um, if you can, have a current client be there at the workshop to share their story. That's obviously very powerful uh, to have them do that. And then again, sign them up for a free trial. Okay, so media. Uh, 
So again, media is something I've you know, done a lot of. Um, like Lindsay said, I've done at least over 100 TV shows, which really helped me early on in my career, um, kind of build up my credibility, build up my exposure. And I've backed away now on the TV a little bit because it takes a lot of time and effort. Um, TV, I've done a lot of radio and public radio as well. And magazines, online blogs, news channels. And one of, the, one of the presentations I give to seminars like this is just on media. So I can spend a lot of time on this. People, people are always asking, how do you get on TV or whatever. Um, and so basically the, the quick premise of it is you got to have a newsworthy topic, something that's interesting, something not necessarily that's new because there's nothing new, but you got to have a new twist on it. Um, and then send some sort of like press release. And you can Google what a press release looks like, but just a really short half page, maybe full page um, of, of why... Uh, you know, working with baby boomers, for example, is important, why we're needing it in our society. It's a very easy thing to write about. And then this unique program that you've created in your community. And then you want to share, if it's TV, share with them exactly what you're going to do. And demonstration is usually really important on TV. So my formula, pretty much, I would say, 80 of my 100 TV shows, I bring on a client, we have a topic, I forget what my topic was on this one, but this, this video that I posted on YouTube has got like 150,000 views on it. Um, but this was on, this was my Fit Moms, and this was on how to have a higher vertical jump, which that's not what my topic was. But I think it was just on fat burning or something, and we talked about plyometrics as, as one of the things. And this was a dramatic demonstration. She's like 4'11", and she was able to jump up on top of that. Um, so making things interesting um, and, and unique, I guess, with video, uh, is super important and explaining to the news reporters, the producers, um, what it's going to look like. So again, if you don't like to be on TV, if the thought of that scares you, maybe that's not the right place for you. But there's a lot of other avenues, blogs, um, writing for online magazines, those sorts of things that you can get into. And just contact producers, um, TV personalities, the on-air people, they also make decisions. And um, you know, editors of magazines just continually kind of be uh, sending them stuff. Don't be pestering them. It gets annoying, but I always be following up and say, hey, you know, I sent this a couple days ago. I know you're really busy. If you have a chance, take a look at it. Just keep trying different angles, and I think if you're persistent, most, most have success with it. Okay, public speaking. Again, a huge thing. I think, you know, if, if you can do one thing well with being a fitness professional, public speaking helps a lot. Uh, I took speech classes in college. I was terrified of speaking back then, but it's opened up a lot of doors for me. I've been able to do some keynote speeches to large corporations, for example, where I get paid you know, three to $8,000 for a 45-minute speech, which is pretty cool. And they usually buy my books then for everyone, too. So it's an extra you know, feature of having your book. Lunch and Learns is great. We have, we have corporate wellness that we do uh, in Madison. So Lunch and Learns is a good place to get people. Libraries. Um, and then other like clients have done things with churches quite a bit. That works well. So just kind of tap into your local clients and see, hey, you know, maybe it's free. I'll, I'll do free, three free workshops for anybody, uh, for all my clients, something like that. And just put that out in your email newsletter, and a lot of times you'll have people you know, asking to do it. All right, Facebook guys. I could literally spend probably about three days just talking to you about this. Um, but I'm going to try to keep it as simple as you can, because who, who's doing paid Facebook ads right now? Oh, wow, very nice. Excellent. It's a lot more than I thought. So this is what's really helped me. I've spent about, I think only like $30,000 this year, or the past 12 months, and it's brought in about 400000 So the ROI has been very good. So again, I could get really deep into this. I'm going to try to keep it relatively simple. Um, who we're looking at. So here's my target market. I hate the word target, though. Who am I looking to inspire? Who do I want to reach? So 50 to 65, I break it up into two categories generally. 50 to 62 and then 63 plus, okay? Yes, you could break it up into more categories. Hopefully, eventually, Facebook's gonna have a, a 65 to 70, a 70 to 75, whatever, 75. Um, but right now, it's just 65 plus. They've gotta be rolling that out sooner than later. Because what I speak to a 65-year-old and a 75-year-old would be a little bit different. Um, so I'd like to have that. And then I generally do 10-mile radius of our studio. You know, it kind of really depends on where you live, kind of what the traffic's like. Is it all interstates or is, does 10 miles take like 45 minutes to get to? So just kind of be, be your own judge on that. But I usually do about 10 mile radius. So for, let me go back for a second. So for this, um, people always ask how large is your reach then? 
When I break it up into these two sections, basically it's 14,000, 14,000. So about 14,000 from 50 to 62 within 10 mile radius of my place, and another 14,000, 63 plus. So I've got about 28,000 women that I'm basically trying to share my, my stories with and all that kind of stuff. So images. Uh, yesterday, I think it was Nicole, talked about group pictures, or just pictures in general of your clients, way better than stock photos. 100% agree on that. Um, so this right here, the 28,000 women in my community are sick of this picture. I can guarantee that. Because I've spent about 28,000 of those dollars, those $30,000, with this picture and one other picture. And I've done a lot of things that most experts say would, would not be good, uh, would not be right, and, but uh, it's, it's worked well. And now it's working less and less, because I've like probably, I'd say the frequency of this ad is probably at over 100 right now. But again, it just keeps working. So I keep drawing it. But it's working less and less. I've saturated this one message. So uh, I'm going to switch things up now. I, I'm working on that right now. So ideal looking clients doing ideal goal activities. That's kind of what I'm transitioning into now. So maybe that's a fit and healthy 60-year-old woman pushing her you know, child on the swing or playing with her, you know, kicking a soccer ball or going on a vacation with her husband, something like that. And uh, you know, we all know that people who are 70 always look to, they think they look like they're 60. So you're always gonna have them you know, be like, oh, if they're 60, you're gonna attract like a 65 or 70 year old person to that. So if you're showing a picture of a 55 year old woman, that 60 or 65 year old will still connect to that picture. You know, don't make it look so fake and so you know, perfect looking models. Again, it's not what we want. We want real looking, but I'd say healthy and vibrant people. Um, or your client's doing fun exercises and smiling and laughing. That's another thing. Using our facilities, so they kind of get a feel, more comfort level when they do come in. Okay, so ad copy. I don't know if you can see all this. I can hardly read this myself. But um, making it specific, exclusive, limited, and appealing to their wants and desires. Those are, that's the formula, I think. And now this is just a straight up, kind of uh, direct response marketing ad, which I know a lot of experts are saying doesn't work, um, and it kind of annoys people. But again, this is how I brought in about $400,000 with this exact ad. Um, again, it's, it's, at some point it's not gonna work as well, and so now I'm going to more of sharing stories, um, sending them to blog posts, to videos, building that relationship up a little bit more, because it seems like I found about the 350 people in my target market that are all excited and they only, only needed this. There's a lot more people out there that need and want our service, but they won't respond well to this. So I gotta get a little closer because my eyes aren't good here. So this is, here, this is what it says. I'm looking for five to six, five to eight, hopefully guys can still see me. Okay, five to eight Madison area women in their 50s and early 60s looking to get in better shape. So we're calling out a small group of individuals, women, we're making it specific, and we're saying 50s and 60s. Now sometimes Facebook does not like when you call out a specific age demographic. Sometimes one of my ads is, is menopause kicking your butt? Or has menopause kicked your butt? And sometimes Facebook allows that ad, sometimes it, it bans it. You just never know. Um, but that's worked pretty well too. Attend a free workout now, I give the link. Um, do you wanna have the energy you had? So this, this, is for, um, this is for my 50 to like 62 year olds. I would not put this ad out for like 65 to 75 year olds. Do you want to have the energy you had back when you were in your 40s? Are you looking to gain more strength, lose the spare tire around the midsection and just feel better? And it goes on a little bit more, just talking more about our program, kind of talking about the price point um, and all that kind of stuff. And then uh, down below, free trial session, fit over 50, small group personal training, Madison's number one place to train for women. Um, and so that one right there, uh, that one, I haven't spent that much money on. It's just got 26 likes, five comments, and four shares. But I'll show you a few others that are a lot bigger than that. Yep. Um, yes, I actually do in there. Yep. Because I want to weed out the people already that, uh, that can't afford it. And then, uh, okay, so this is, yeah, this is basically the same ad. So this one, I want you to look, I don't know if you can see down below there, um, but this one has, can you see how many likes there are on that one? 347 likes, approximately, and uh, 95 comments, okay? So the social proof, so there's a lot of people liking it, commenting on it. Um, the reach, I think, is like 20-some thousand there. But there's a little bit more. This isn't just another very similar ad. I'm looking for five Madison area women 
who are in their 50s or 60s who want to lose weight around their midsection, gain strength, increase energy. Spots are very limited. You can kind of read it, apply, and come in for a free session. So this is actually the one that I've spent about, I think I spent probably $10,000 in this ad. I just kept running it over and over and over again. And I would get you know, people to fill out that questionnaire. It would go right to that questionnaire in SurveyMonkey. And it, would, it started off costing me only 3 to $5 to get a lead. And then that increased and increased. Now it's probably about 40 or $50 to get a lead. But if I close, you know, one in four, if I close one in four of those people, that's $200 to get a lead, $150 to get a lead. And, you know, a 24 a week program with us is at least fifteen to $1,800 minimum. And they'll probably maybe bring someone else in. So it's, and most of them will stay a lot longer than 24 weeks. So the ROI is still insane. So when they click the ad, like to apply for their free session, it's the survey. So in order to get their free trial workout, they fill out that survey. Yep, and then, and then we contact them. All right, so this is my other one. Um, just a big group of our ladies. Most of those women are 65 plus. Um, so kind of a fun group shot and uh, get back down here. So nearly all the spots have been filled because um, I had, had a, a previous one before this. I'm looking for only five more Madison area women who are in their 60s and 70s who want to gain strength, increase energy, improve balance, enjoy retirement, keep up with your grandkids. Spots are very limited for this small group training and nutrition program. We've just opened up a couple more time slots, which this is all true, right? We're not trying to lie. Um, since our current sessions are sold out. So when, what we do is we wait for our sessions to get sold out, get that uh, group of 10 filled, and then we open up new sessions. That's just kind of how we, we scale it. To apply and come in for a free workout, uh, to test out the program, fill out the short survey, and I'll follow up with you immediately. So the ad before this, I want you to see, was from my personal page. Okay, so you've got probably, your, I've, so I've got the Fit Moms Transformation Center. That's kind of our main business page. Um, and I could run ads from that, and sometimes I do. But um, with the 50 to 60-ish population, a lot of them know who I am already because I've done so much TV and Facebook ads. So I use um, my personal page for this one. And I say, I am looking, so it's a little bit more personal that way. Um, but then for the older population who doesn't know who the heck I am, I created a new one called Madison's Fit Focused grandparents. I just made that up. It's only got like 100 likes on it. It literally had like 20 likes when uh, I started running ads to it. It doesn't matter. But that looks a little bit more, more legit. All right, Madison Fit Grandparents. If you're over 65, you relate more to being a grandparent. If you're 50 and you're a grandparent, you don't want to be called a grandparent. I learned that early on. Um, but it seems like after about 65, they embrace it. After 70, they rock it out, okay? So I'm not turning them off. But if I, if I ran this to 50-year-olds, they would not like it even if they are. Uh, so if you love it and decide this is right for you, it's only about $19 a session, 70% less than most personal trainers, apply today. Okay, can you read how many likes this one has? Who's got good eyes? 948 plus. So I've had almost 1,000 likes on that one and about 165 comments. So I think one of the reasons why these two ads have worked really well is because of the social proof and the amount of money I've put in throughout the, the past few months with it. Um, and so people see the ad and they're like, wow, there's almost 1,000 people who have liked this thing. It must be legit. And then they start reading all the comments, and we've, we've replied back to every single person who's, who's sent that. So the social proof there is massive. So when I call them up, it's funny. I'll be like, oh, have you heard of our programs in the past? They're like, yeah, I see them all over Facebook. It's this one ad, basically, I've, I've had for the, the year. And they feel like they, they know you already just because of this Facebook ad. Um, so again, it's worked really well for me. And I've only got a minute left, a minute and a half. All right, so I would say start with $10 a day per ad set and build from there. So I'd recommend, you know, trying out a couple different ad sets, a couple different ads, um, play around with that. And when I'm kind of going into a little bit more aggressive with getting more people, um, I'll usually run about $200 a day is kind of what I find works well. Um, and I'll get, you know, quite a few leads each day from that. You can either set the campaign up for cost per um, website click or cost per conversion. Cost per conversion is probably the better way. And again, if you guys don't know what Facebook ads are, this is over your head probably. But um, you want a pixel the, once they fill out the form, right? So once they fill out the form, which you can't do on SurveyMonkey, that's why you want to put it on your own web page so that you'll know once they fill out the form, they go to a thank you page, put the pixel on there, so that then Facebook can optimize for people who are going to fill out that form. That's the best way to do it now 
with, with kind of what the newest, newest way is. So basically, you're telling Facebook, find as many people who want to fill out this survey as possible. And that's going to be your, your cheapest way to go. So final thoughts. Make sure you have enough customer support. Okay, they, uh, The older they are, I think the higher expectations and just the more they want to chat, which there's nothing wrong with that. But you've got to have extra you know, front desk people and, uh, and support, billing, stuff like that. Allow for fl flexibility with uh, pausing memberships. You know, if they, our, our policy is if you're gone for more than two weeks, we'll pause your membership. If it's, uh, if it's less than two weeks, you can come and get a fourth session in um, for the weeks leading up to it, for the weeks afterwards. So you can kind of make that up. Uh, the more touch points you can have, the better throughout the process. Having them substitute sessions if they miss is really important. Keep reminding them why they're here. Why are you here? It's not just to get a good sweat on. It's to be able to play with your grandkids, to enjoy retirement, to live as many healthy quality years as possible. And don't be afraid to spend money in advertising. Get a coach to help you. I've had a lot of coaches throughout the years. A lot of mastermind groups I've been part of. They've been invaluable. So the last little thing I can, I'm trying to figure out what I could give you guys. Um, so if you go to this website, if you pull out your phone right now um, and you go to dustinmarfitness.com forward slash FAI. So by the way, it's going to pop and say the website has spam on it. Um, well, it did a few months ago, but um, Google just has not given it away. So you can still go to the website. It's clean. We've cleaned it up. Um, you can opt in. So you're going to put your name and email down. Basically, you'll get to see the follow-up sequence you would get if you were a client or if you were a prospect in our Fit Over 50. So I'll warn you, you're going to get a bunch of emails from me, plus you'll get my live emails, okay? But I'd like to think I've done a pretty good job over the last 10 years on email writing. So feel free to look. Get some ideas of what I do on my topics and stuff like that. Um, don't steal them, but feel free to, to, to use the ideas and, and run with them. So you'll have a, a blueprint there. And uh, it's another way that if you want to connect with me, you can just reply to any of those emails and uh, I get them. So again, slash forward slash FAI and I am over. So no questions, I guess. Thank you. Yeah, I think we have a quick time for a question. Say it, and then I'm going to repeat it just so yeah. that we get it on. Yeah, so the question, the question is, um, are people that age on Facebook? And the answer is absolutely. They are ravenous on Facebook. <laughs> Um, they're probably a larger population than any other population right now um, on it. So, yeah, it's, uh, they're, they're on there all the time. So, do you have an LBO or do you just do a free session? So, I, I basically, my low barrier offer is the free session right now. I don't do like a three session for X amount of dollars. Um, I just find them because then if they're going to be in one of my, art, my groups that I've already created, it just kind of is confusing, I think. Um, one session, they can figure out in one session pretty much. I've had a couple people just still hesitant. I've let them come to one more session, you know, to get a feel for it. But after one session, 90% of people will know one way or the other if it's the right fit for them. Yeah. I'll have low barrier offers for my other, other programs, but for this small group personal training, no. In like 30 seconds, can you define a low barrier offer? So low barrier offer is a short term, low price point introductory offer to get them in the door. So maybe it's like for boot camps, we have 21, 28 day, six week challenges, programs at a smaller price point so they don't have to commit to a long term thing. And then you get them to know, like, and trust you. And then you get them on your membership. Yes, good. Yes, thank you. I forgot to mention that. So we have a private members page on our website, which has a bunch of workouts they can do, all of our menu plans, recipes, all that kind of stuff. And we have a private Facebook group as well for them. It's not as active as I'd like to, but when they join, they introduce themselves. One of the challenges I'm trying to figure out is how do we get these people to connect with each other? Because, you know, we've got 175, 200 people at any given time coming in. They all love to do things like golf or whatever. They all have their hobbies. How can we connect them with each other? And we're still trying to figure that out. The Facebook group should be a great place to do it. It just hasn't been quite as active, um, but we'll post things there. And yeah, private Facebook group, I think, is, is a no-brainer. Definitely should. Done. All right, cool. If you guys have more questions, I'll be back. <laughs>